Um, Sorry. So you will get a follow-up email after the presentation um, with all of this information and with the PowerPoint and contact information for everyone you're going to meet this evening. Um, so our first event for October Exploration is Careers in School Psychology that you are at this evening. And um, coming up next week, there'll be two events, the Interprofessional Team-Based Care and Interactive Workshop. Um, this is an opportunity to hear from a variety of healthcare practitioners to learn about how the healthcare team interacts and works together in a clinical setting. Um, other careers in mental health, in addition to school psychology, tonight specifically school psychology, um, and then healthcare careers. So all different types of paths um, beyond, beyond the MD and other common healthcare practitioners. All right, next slide. So to, um, to just to get started, I'm Maureen and um, I'm a career and internship specialist with SuccessWorks. We are career development office for students in the College of Letters and Science. And we partner with offices and departments across campus to put on events like this. And um, to get started, pretend you're signing in, you're getting out your student ID and in the chat, I am entering in the, the sign-in form. If you could take a minute and just quickly sign in for us um, for data management, data records purposes. And after this evening, we promise we won't email you. So um, help us out with that. And I will turn it over to Professors Katie Eklund and Andy Garvaz. Thank you, Katie. Great. Thank you, Maureen. Um, and thank you, everyone, for being here on a cloudy and little bit of a rain <laughs> Wednesday evening. Uh, we really appreciate you taking time out of your busy week to um, meet with us to learn more about school psychology. Um, so uh, as Maureen indicated, uh, my name is Katie Eklund. I'm an associate professor in the school psychology program here at UW-Madison. Um, and I'm joined um, with one of my colleagues who will introduce himself here in a minute, as well as three of our students. Um, we're here today to talk to you a little bit about the field of school psychology, um, provide you just some background information. If it's a field you don't know much about, we'll be able to tell you a little bit more tonight. And then um, Andy will tell you a little bit about our program specifically. And then we have three current students, um, two of our students in our PhD program, and then one of our students in our education specialist program will be here to talk a little bit about their experience um, within the field and within our program. And then uh, we have a few questions that we'd like for them to answer at the end of the presentation this evening. Um, we will spend about 30, 35, 40 minutes talking, hopefully closer to 30, and then um, we'll plan to give lots of time for question and answer. So um, feel free to stick around at the end to, to ask any questions that you have. If you'd like to use the chat box to ask any questions as we proceed, um, feel free to do that as well. Um, if it's something that I know is coming up later in the presentation, I may not stop or pause to answer it, but if it's something that um, is related to what we're talking about on that screen, um, then certainly can tell you a little bit more about that as well. Okay, so I'll go ahead and turn it over to Andy and our students and continue with the introductions. Hi hey everybody, uh, great to be with you this evening. Um, I'm Andy Garbitz, also an associate professor in the School of Psychology program uh, here at UW-Madison. Hi, I'm Miranda Zahn. I'm a fifth year PhD student um, in the School of Psychology program here at UW. Um, I am from South Florida, um, specifically the town of Stewart. Um, and I actually completed undergrad here um, with double majors in human development and family studies through the School of Human Ecology and the psychology program. Hi everyone, my name is Brittany. Um, I'm in my third year of the doctoral program in school psychology. Um, I'm from St. Louis, Missouri, and I attended the University of Missouri in Columbia, where I double majored in psychology and sociology. Hi everyone, I'm Noah, a second year student in the school psychology program 
and I'm working towards an education specialist degree. So if you don't know what that is, you'll learn in this presentation. And I'm from Oak Creek, which is a suburb of Milwaukee. And I graduated from Madison with a double major in rehabilitation psychology and psychology. And I got a certificate in educational policy studies. Right, so lots of underachievers here. Um, <laughs> really happy to have some of our current students here. And um, certainly a few of our students have had experiences as an undergrad here at UW. So we thought that would be helpful in talking to many of you who are current students, um, as well as Brittany, who can bring in some outside experience. So thank you for being here. Okay, so um, what do you want for your career? I think um, school psychology is a field that many individuals don't find out about um, until I joke like that it's too late um, <laughs> or um, at, a, at a time in their career um, or during their education um, when you might be considering what you'd like to do for graduate school. So I congratulations to all of you. You found it during your undergraduate studies, which is fantastic. Um, I like school psychology because, well, I have lots of reasons that I like this field, um, but school psychologists, um, we like to say are experts, um, are education majors who are experts in psychology and psychology majors who are experts in education. And so it's a nice combination um, if you um, like working with children, you love the field of psychology, um, you really feel drawn towards K through 12 public education. I think this career is a perfect combination um, of all of those different disciplines. Um, certainly working with families, working with teachers, contributing to supportive communities are all things that school psychologists are trained to do. And we're here today to talk to you a little bit more about that field or our field, I should say. Um, it's also a career where there's lots of job openings. Um, school psychologists are often in shortage. Uh, there's a shortage of school psychologists here in the state of Wisconsin specifically, but often in most um, every other state around the country as well. So if you desire to stay in Wisconsin, you won't have a problem finding a job as a school psychologist. If you'd like to move somewhere else, there are plenty of openings. Um, and so certainly job security. Um, if you're somebody who likes to do different things, you'd like to have different balls in the air. Maybe you're like me and you get bored easily. And so you'd like to do different types of things in your job. Um, certainly as a school psychologist, you have a diverse array of experiences around assessment, intervention, consultation, um, working with families, teachers, educators, um, lots, of, lots of nice opportunities to diversify what you do. School psychologists will talk about a salary and benefits a little bit today, as well as flexibility and stability. Okay, so this could be the career for you. So who are school psychologists? Uh, school psychologists are highly qualified professionals with a graduate degree. Um, this is a career which requires you um, to have at, minim at minimum um, what we would call an educational specialist degree, um, or some programs have um, an MS or MA degree but typically it's a three-year advanced master's degree. Um, students spend the first two years um, completing coursework and internship or field work opportunities working in local schools. And then the third year is usually a full-time internship. And, and in Wisconsin, that internship actually pays pretty well. And so it's a commitment to be in school for two years with an additional third year internship to receive that three-year degree. Um, Professionals or school psychologists can also seek out a PhD. And we'll talk a little bit more about what that PhD uh, degree includes and how that's different than the EDS. School psychologists provide comprehensive psychological and educational services to diverse students. Uh, we work to support students' social, emotional, and mental health. Um, many school psychologists do work in schools as the title implies, um, but we have many professionals uh, who work in um, hospitals, who work in community mental health, um, who work for nonprofit organizations. And so there is some job flexibility in terms of um, working in K through 12 public education, but also finding other school related or mental health related fields um, that might be of interest to you as well. And then overall, uh, our goal is to promote children's learning, positive behavior and development, right? I like to say that um, school psychologists help address behavior or help address barriers to learning and certainly help promote positive mental health um, for students. So what do school psychologists do? 
um, within the K through 12 um, public educational setting and in other settings, which will show you where school psychologists work. Um, we're responsible for conducting assessments, engaging in counseling and other mental health and academic services. Um, we see kids one-on-one -on -one, uh, to provide therapy and counseling and also in small group, um, also to provide small group support. We collaborate with parents, teachers, and administrators to help promote positive student functioning. And then um, our goal is to help schools, families, and communities provide successful outcomes for children. Um, we find that many, uh, many of you might have said, you know, my school didn't have a school psychologist or I didn't know there was a school psychologist when I was in school. I know that was something um, that I experienced. I didn't actually know sc about school psychology until I was out in the world working as a school social worker. And so um, certainly um, we find that school psychologists are employed by most public school districts um, because there are kids out there who have behavioral or learning difficulties and require the services of a school psychologist. Um, many school psychs work with kids who might have um, challenges with their friends who are struggling with depression or other mental health issues, um, who might academically be falling behind or be struggling with school for some reason. Um, we find that children who are coping with crisis, right? If there was, um, when you were in middle school or high school, perhaps you remember a time um, when there was some type of crisis at your school, maybe a student had passed away or um, there was some type of natural disaster. School psychologists are well-trained to know how to address crises that happen in the school setting. Um, we also address issues of poverty, violence, homelessness, foster youth, loss and grief and address issues um, that might be going on in the home, such as divorce, death, substance abuse, and military deployment. I'll also make a quick ploy as we are talking about school safety. In the spring, if any of you are interested in taking a course on school safety and crisis response, uh, we do have a class, um, Ed Psych 506. Uh, that's a joint graduate and undergraduate course where you can learn more about school safety and crisis response. And the class is taught by a school psychologist here in the community. So if you're looking for classes this spring, it might be a good class to check out. Um, as I mentioned, most school psychologists work in K through 12 public schools, um, but not all of them. So as you can see, um, this is based on a study that came out in 2015. Um, we find that 86% of school psychs do work in public schools. However, another 10%, like Andy and myself, work at a uh, university, and there are um, other school psychologists who work in um, like the College Counseling Center, uh, perhaps on campus, or who are faculty or potentially in research positions. Um, we also have faculty within our program who run our school psychology training clinic, where we see kids and families from the community um, who receive assessment and intervention services. School psychs also work in private schools or charter schools um, around the country. Um, there are school psychologists who work in international schools around the world as well. 7% uh, of school psychologists work in private practice, either full-time or on a part-time basis. I think one of the nicest things about um, the PhD program is that you can graduate and um, work towards becoming a licensed psychologist. Um, of, um, and so that gives you some flexibility and freedom to work in other settings, such as being a licensed psychologist in a community mental health center um, or perhaps in private practice. So we see that um, school, some school psychs um, do that in private practice and another 1.5% do that in clinics and hospitals. Uh, we also see that a uh, small percentage work at the Department of Education. Um, one thing I found that's pretty unique here in Wisconsin is um, we often lose school psychologists because they get called into leadership positions within schools. So many school psychologists will work for a number of years um, in public schools and then go on to be an assistant principal or a director of special education. Um, or um, we have school psychologists working at the Wisconsin Department of Public Instruction or other departments of education at the state level. Um, so I think because of um, our role in being a problem solver, the leadership skills that school psychologists obtain um, throughout their roles in schools, they're often well equipped to take on those types of roles as well. So how do you become a school psychologist? Um, we'll talk a little bit about what does preparation for graduate school look like, graduate school coursework, um, the types of training you get in the field, and then um, the focus on your last year of the program being around internship. Okay. 
make sure we're doing okay on time. Okay, so um, as I mentioned before, in order to become a school psychologist, you do need to attend graduate school and to receive either um, an advanced master's degree or what I refer to as an advanced master's degree, but as a three-year um, education specialist or other um, three-year master's degree program um, or a PhD or a PhD. Um, in preparation for that, uh, we find that many students receive their bachelor's degree or undergrad degree in psychology, child development, so sociology, education, um, or other related field. But this is not a prerequisite. Um, we have had a number of students um, apply and be accepted to our program and other programs throughout the country who had nothing to do with any of these fields. Um, we have a current student right now who was in the, the business program. Um, she got a business degree in undergrad and is now in our program. We had somebody who worked as a journalist and is now in our program. And so people have career changes and realize, you know, I can think of people who went to go student teach their senior year and realize they didn't want to be a teacher. And so finding um, that you have a career change at some point, certainly that happens, um, or finding out the degree or major that you selected maybe isn't a perfect fit. Um, that doesn't preclude you from being accepted into graduate programs. So um, of course, if you're exploring school psychology, um, taking a class in one of these programs is great. Um, we also offer um, a class, um, and Andy, you'll have to help me remember the number of Amanda's class, but we offer a class called Psychology in the Schools in the fall that's taught by a local school psychologist. Is it EP 504 or 506? It's a 506. 506. Okay, um, so it's an educational psychology 506 course taught in the fall by a local school psychologist. Um, and psychology in the schools is a great way to begin to explore if um, school psychology is a good fit for you or not. So I um, would also recommend that as well. Um, those of you who are applying to graduate school, I think one of the best ways to prepare yourself to be a um, competitive candidate for a school psych program is to start working with kids. Um, there's lots of different ways you can do that. Um, working, volunteering as a tutor at a local school. Um, many of our students were like former camp counselors or worked at a YMCA um, or were a part of a mentoring program. And I'm sure some of our current students who are on the call tonight will tell you a little bit more about what they did. Um, when you're seeking out programs, um, there are, um, this was a trivia question in my intro to school site class a couple weeks ago, but um, there are uh, over 200 programs around the country in school psychology right now. And so lots of options for where you can attend graduate school. Um, certainly one thing to consider is degree level, right? Are you interested in a graduate program that might take three years or five years? Um, is your program, is the program you want to attend approved by the National Association of School Psychologists um, at the EDS level or master's level? Or is it approved by the American Psychological Association at the PhD level? Um, what are faculty research interests? How um, involved are faculty with students? Um, how big is the program? Where is it located? Um, there are certainly a lot of important considerations to think about um, when you attend graduate school. Um, we also know that graduate school is expensive. So certainly as you explore programs, talking to current students about funding, about um, what the cost is to attend the program, student satisfaction with how they like the program that they're a part of is important. Um, how long does it take students to complete the program? And then what kind of um, advising opportunities are there? And you can read more about this. Um, NASP is the National Association of School Psychologists. They have a lot of excellent resources if you are new to school psychology. And there's a website down here. Um, you can go to nasponline.org to check out and learn more um, about some of these things as well. Okay, um, this slide highlights the differences between the specialist level, right? So the three-year uh, master's degree equivalent program um, and the PhD program. Um, the EDS degree here currently at UW-Madison is 72 credits. It's three years, as I mentioned um, a little bit about that, two years of coursework, one year of internship, and allows you to work as a psychologist upon graduation. Our PhD program is typically, um, on average, students are here for four years, where they take coursework, engage in research uh, projects, 
um, are engaged in a number of practicum and clinic experiences. And then um, their fifth year um, is a full-time inter paid internship. And the PhD program in school psychology allows you to work um, in K through 12 schools, to work as a faculty member, um, to be engaged in research and certainly clinical practice as well. Um, there's more options, as I mentioned, to become a licensed psychologist um, and to work in independent clinical practice upon graduation. Okay. Um, within our program and, and most or all school psychology programs that are accredited, um, you'll find that you will receive a number of supervised experiences in schools, clinics, and or related settings throughout our program. Um, our students spend their first year working um, a little about a day a week in local schools. Um, a, across both our PhD and EDS program. Um, our PhD students spend an entire year working in our community training clinic. Um, our EDS students have a condensed summer experience. And then during the second year of the EDS program and third year of the PhD program, um, students are working two full days a week in a local public school. Um, and this is all prior to going on your full-time internship. So lots of hands-on experience, getting to know what it means to work as a school psychologist. Um, in the interest of time, I'm gonna move through these last slides um, kind of quickly because I want Andy to be able to tell you a little bit more about um, our program and certainly for you to hear from Miranda, Brittany and Noah this evening. Um, I'll highlight just a few points, um, as I mentioned, um, there's a high demand for school psychologists, especially those from culturally and linguistically uh, diverse backgrounds. Um, as many of you who are in the education field might know, 80% um, of teachers and this is the same, 80% of school psychologists right now are white. And so we're looking to diversify our profession uh, because uh, over 50% of the students um, in public schools are from culturally and linguistically diverse backgrounds. And so right now we don't uh, match our field and certainly need more individuals from um, diverse backgrounds. School psychology has been listed in the top 10 among the, among the best social service jobs in US News and World Report and is a stable career um, with good benefits. Uh, this slide here shows the average salary by region. Um, I'll just highlight that in the Midwest, um, the average salary for school psychologists is at 66,000. And I'll highlight that's for nine hours, or sorry, for nine months of work. Um, we follow usually like a teacher's schedule for the most part. So you get your summers off. Um, you usually have somewhat of an abbreviated day. I know when I was working in the schools, I would, my school started early at 7 a.m., but we were done by 3 p.m. So it um, allowed for some nice flexibility in terms of having a personal life outside of work as well. So certainly a great career choice. Uh, these are some of our uh, doctoral graduates um, about a year ago, um, and we have lots of positive things to say about the field. So I'll go ahead and turn it over to Andy and let him tell you a little bit about our program. Great, thanks Katie. Um, yeah, so I'm gonna just share with you a little bit about our, um, our program, the course sequence and some related um, requirements. Uh, so here are our program aims. Um, so I just, I'll just i just kind of briefly review these. Uh, in essence, uh, you can see here that we, um, you know, first and foremost, just provide uh, training in the foundations of, of psychology and, and school psychology, some of those, um, you know, key areas of individual and cultural diversity, um, communication, and reflective practice, as well as uh, your ethical, legal, and professional standards, um, sort of consonant with the field of school psychology, then you get um, strong training and assessment in evidence-based prevention intervention. Uh, and then you also get training in the science of, of psychology, uh, including aspects of research measurement and evaluation. Um, school psychology is obviously a very applied field and that we're working directly with families, directly with um, students or children and youth, um, and with, uh, with teachers and educators and other health um, service professionals. And so the emphasis is on integrating. Uh, research and practice and related professional um, skills and interpersonal competencies. 
Uh, but our real emphasis, of course, is just on making uh, everyone a great school psychologist ready to make meaningful contributions to the field um, in whatever setting um, the, you may choose. As Katie mentioned, many individuals work in public schools, but there's um, diversity in, in setting. And so um, our emphasis is just making sure that, um, that you're the best school psychologist, you know, or um, professional service psychologist that you can be in, uh, in these uh, different settings. I think that, you know, this is just such a, um, you know, an amazing field in every meeting and every, um, you know, counseling session and every uh, like school-wide or district-wide meeting, I mean, you have the opportunity to impact directly um, uh, child development and, and how families and, and youth receive and experience um, uh, their promotion of academic um, and mental health outcomes. Uh, so the sample coursework, um, this, this slide just sort of takes you through uh, the kinds of courses that you can expect. So you'll you know, have courses in, in therapy and school-based interventions, as well as assessment. Um, you'll have courses that um, provide training in, uh, in working directly with um, families, directly with teachers um, and with other educators to help support um, students. So we really focus a lot on building systems, um, building district or school-wide practices um, that will promote uh, appropriate and, and, and helpful mental health outcomes for um, for children um, and youth, and also an emphasis on research and applied statistics. Um, but that shouldn't be scary, it should be exciting. Um, this opportunity to really integrate um, the science and practice of school psychology um, to conduct, um, you know, rigorous evaluations and create the change that we all um, want for our, our children and, and youth. Uh, our, so here, the next two slides just review the EDS and the PhD program. So again, it's a balance of courses, field work, and research opportunities. Uh, again, very applied, the opportunity from day one um, to be out um, uh, in schools, working directly with uh, with students directly with educators, um, and then that's that's similar. That that experience parallels across the EDS and doctoral programs, where you know in your first semester you'll be working directly, uh, you know, in applied settings in schools, and also um, being trained in uh, in these core uh, features of school psychology, um, while at the same time being exposed to to research kinds of activities. So as Katie mentioned, um, with the EDS degree, you have two years of coursework on campus, uh, concurrent practica um, experiences. Uh, culminating with one year um, of internship, which for um, students in our EDS program occurs in schools. Um, for our PhD program, um, a similar balance of courses, field work, and research. The difference here is uh, four years um, on campus typically with uh, one year of, of internship. Um, and that can that can vary a little bit. So you know, it could be briefer. It could be more. Uh, you know, you could spend more time on campus depending on how uh, how much training or deep of experiences that you're really looking for in in some of these areas. Uh, and then the internship uh, may include uh, a full time experience in a school, uh, but it could also include a, a full time experience in a medical setting or um, a community mental health um, you know kind of setting uh, or um, or other kinds of experiences. Um, as well. The different one other difference with the doctoral program is that in addition to you know the school-based field work, you also have uh, a full year of training in a in a clinic. Uh, and, and the opportunity to specialize, um, you know, through different kinds of advanced uh, practica experiences where you might work in a, um, have an experience in a community mental health setting, um, a chance to specialize in other kinds of, um, of professional psychology um, settings as well as schools, uh, which then will equip you to uh, be very competitive for internships and in, in medical and community mental health settings as well as school settings. Um, so the student experience, you know, in our program, hopefully our, um, you know, amazing students in a, in a few minutes will have the chance to share with you just a little bit more about their experience here. Um, here's a picture of, of us uh, uh, last year um, out at the terrace. Um, so I think we, we really um, reflect a lot on, on the student experience, as Katie alluded to, um, really pay, uh, pay attention and directly address sort of this work-life 
uh, balance and really are intentional and are focused on um, creating a positive climate for students that we're really interested in um, the whole person, uh, you know, acknowledging that you all have interests, ideas, um, opportunities outside of um, what you'll do in the program. And we really want to foster and encourage and promote and empower individuals to, um, to make the most of, life, of their whole life and their whole experience. And so we try to promote that through um, a variety of climate oriented initiatives that we have in our program through socials like um, you see here and even now um, when we don't have the opportunity to convene directly together um, as a program we're engaging in a variety of virtual um, kinds of activities where we still have um, the chance to uh, to socialize and um, uh, in, in these other other kinds of ways but our we have a very active um, uh, uh, School Psychology Student Association, as well as many other um, uh, committees whose uh, focus um, really is on um, thinking in a very planful way about creating um, and fostering uh, positive experiences for, um, for all students. Um, so next, we want to just take a little bit of time to um, hear from some of our current students. Um, so I think we can just take these questions um, one by one. Um, and so um, Brittany, Miranda, and Noah, um, let's start with this first question. Uh, how did you become interested in or find out about the field of school psychology? I can start with this one. Um, so I started undergrad in like a totally different, not even psych field in engineering um, and hated it and ended up deciding to take a semester to take just kind of whatever course in the course guide looked interesting. Um, and that brought me to a lot of education and family centered uh, and psych centered courses and sort of met with an advisor and found out that that's what I was setting myself up for with this kind of menagerie of random courses that I just liked. Um, and then after that, I started pursuing uh, more experiences in psychology and then my other major human development and family studies um, and had a mentor in the HDFS department um, who actually had formal training, uh, had gotten her PhD in school psychology and learned more about the field and the ways that school psychology sort of um, bridges the gap of like research, which I had experience with in undergrad, um, but also being applied. So some of my kind of like uh, research experiences in undergrad were a lot more um, sort of like lab setting oriented. And I had a desire to sort of expand to do more research and evaluation in real world school settings. And then also um, in terms of like within psychology, um, I really wanted to um, find a space where I wasn't just working directly one-on-one -on -one with students, but could also have an impact on sort of more of a systems level working with parents and teachers to help them uh, provide support to students in addition to sort of providing supports directly. I can go next. Um, I kind of stumbled upon school psychology. So like Katie alluded to, I did not know it existed um, until I until the end of my um, undergraduate career. Um, and unlike some folks who Katie alluded to um, find it maybe when it's too late, I think I got lucky and found it at the perfect time. Um, I got the amazing opportunity to be a part of an undergraduate research program called um, the McNair Scholars Program. And um, I ended up working with a school psychologist um, who's pretty prominent in, in the field and learned more about what it really was and what it entailed. Um, and since I had always known I wanted to study psychology, that was something that was consistent for me um, all throughout um, my undergraduate career. And I knew that I wanted to work with kids, but didn't really know how um, to combine those things in a way that was meaningful for me. Um, once I figured out the, the work that was being done in school psychology, um, research-wise, uh, because social justice is also something that I'm quite passionate about. Um, and all of those things like educational inequity um, really uh, are all things that you can look into and explore and, and work to combat in school psychology. And, and I didn't know that. And so once I sort of, fi sort of figured that out, um, it was right around the time that I would have been applying or that I was applying to graduate school. And um, yeah, I, got, I was very fortunate in that regard. <laughs> And I'll go next. So during the last two years um, of high school, my best friend was experiencing a lot of significant challenges with her mental health. Um, and she was struggling quite a bit. And she ended up talking to the school psychologist on a regular basis. And so that's how I discovered 
what a school psychologist is. And it turns out my high school had two school psychs, which is very, very rare. And I didn't even know until I was about to graduate. Um, but I saw that the school psych helped my best friend a lot. And so I always saw school psychology as like a very mental health oriented profession. And it was always in the back of my mind as I went to undergrad, I always wanted to do something with counseling. Um, but one, one thing that I was worried about with counseling is just being like, I'd say like the end of the line, like working in private practice and having someone referred to you and the pressure of that I, I thought would be a little too much for me. And so I decided I want I wanted to do something with mental health, but in more of a preventative way or an early intervention way. And so working in a school was really appealing to me because you see all of the children in a community, almost everybody. And you get to identify kids who might otherwise fall through the cracks and you get to do a good amount of counseling and therapy with them um, but you also have that ability to refer them out and to make sure that there's community providers also helping them. And I just like that collaborative type of structure. And then also in my undergrad, I ended up majoring in rehabilitation psychology, um, which basically is all about working with um, people with disabilities. Um, and through that, I worked at the Wiseman Early Childhood Program, which is a preschool on campus that serves many children with disabilities. And the director of that program is actually a school psychologist by training. And so I ended up running into school psychs over and over again, um, learned that I really like to work with kids with disabilities. And that is something that differentiates school psychology from like counseling. Uh, I think we do a lot more assessment and planning in terms of like special education. That's a huge part of the role. And that was equally appealing to me. And on top of that, I was really interested in bullying. I did research on bullying during undergrad and took Katie's, um, Katie Eklund's school safety course my senior year, which she mentioned to you guys. I highly recommend that you take it. That was one of the most interesting classes I've ever took. And so it was just like this perfect balance of mental health work uh, in addition to working with students with disabilities and special education plus school safety and bullying. So it was like the perfect storm and that's how I got interested in it. I'm I'm just gonna thank you to all of you. I'm just gonna stop sharing so that you get, that everyone might be able to see our presenters a little bit better, if that's okay. And um, feel free if you'd like to. Um, oops. Um, feel free to include your video if you'd like to turn your video on. You can. You don't. You definitely don't have to. But um, feel free if you'd like to. Okay. Sorry. All right, I can start with our next question and also cover some of the things that are in the chat. So I think our next question is like, what are your favorite things that you've done in the program? Is that right, Katie? Yes, and somebody also asked about like the challenging part of being in the program. Maybe you were gonna talk about that. <laughs> yeah, I can talk about that too. Um, so to respond to Alyssa in the chat a little bit uh, more specifically, the reason that I chose school psychology over other mental health fields um, is just because I am, like Noah said, really interested in that like sort of prevention and early intervention um, type of service delivery. Um, I'm also really interested in a consultative type of service delivery. So I really love working with parents and teachers and supporting them to enact different behavioral supports um, or learning supports for students. Um, and I just didn't see that more indirect work um, or more like systemic work happening for me in a more like directly counseling sort of field. So that's why I chose school psych instead. Um, then my favorite things in the program, I could talk about this all day, um, but I won't. Um, so my favorite things uh, right now um, are that I'm at the point in my PhD where I'm getting to specialize a little bit more. Um, and so I have two practica right now that are really great. Um, one of them is on that more systems level that I keep talking about. Um, so I am working uh, with a local school district um, at sort of the district level, um, supporting their use of data and evaluative measures um, in high schools to promote equity. So what we do is we like really dig into their data in a way that the folks who are in schools or teachers uh, may not have the opportunity or expertise to do. So we dig into that data and give it back to them um, and sort of coach them through how to um, move school-wide practices forward. Um, so I've really liked that sort of like zoomed out consultative role. 
um, that I'm in now. Um, and some other things that I really like, I love research uh, a lot and I love that research in school psych is applied. Um, so I work on a few research projects um, where we're providing direct services, one where I'm supervised um, by Andy and we are like in with students assigned cases uh, with students in schools and working with the parents and teachers directly, but it also is research. And so we're seeing like, how these interventions that we're implementing work for students. And that's a really empowering form of research um, that I think I've really benefited from professionally and feels really tangible in its uh, benefits to students who I care about a lot. Oh, and challenges, I forgot about that. Um, uh, this is hard for me because I feel like the program, like obviously challenges come up, um, but I think our program is really supportive. Um, things that have been sort of like lingering challenges, I guess, that haven't been like resolved quickly with support are just the fact that graduate school is really demanding. Um, as much as we, you know, the program's really supportive um, in terms of like work-life balance, um, it can be sort of grueling at times. And there are weeks that I work a lot, um, but luckily there are also some times that I get to take some time off, um, and I feel really fortunate to be able to be open and honest with, especially the faculty who I work with, who I'm now really close to, um, to, I'm able to be open and honest about those difficulties, um, and often am, you know, supported to take things off my plate or, um, you know, structure my time in a way that allows me to sort of be a person through the difficult experience of grad school. Okay, so I can try to um, get to all these questions as well. Um, so similar to what's been noted by both Miranda and Noah, um, something that was special to me about school psychology was this, um, the ability to access so many children um, at one time. So in looking, in being passionate about mental health, um, social justice and equity um, in children, uh, some like almost all children attend school. So it's just such like a perfect place to uh, support them. Um, and so that's something that I really love about it. And, and similar to what Miranda said, the consultation piece, I love working with families um, and teachers. Um, and it's just, yeah, it's just super exciting because you have a ton of ton of different clients um, rather, than, rather than just one, which can be a, the challenge, like a challenging part as well, but I, I find it exciting. Um, and, some of my favorite parts or experiences in the program. I have really enjoyed our practicum sequence. So um, Katie and Andy alluded to it a bit and so did Randa, but um, we get just such an extensive amount of experiences and practicum, honestly reflecting back on the past, like now my third year and all the different experiences I've had in this short period of time is kind of surreal to be honest, um, because right off, like you hit the ground running, you're immediately in schools, um, working alongside a school psychologist while you're taking these introductory courses into school psychology. So like the uh, academic piece pairs so well with like what you're seeing like in real life. And it's just a really cool experience. And then you get to work in an actual, like, I mean, it's our, it's our training clinic, but you get to have actual clients and, and that just feels like you have so much autonomy and, um, uh makes you feel really confident about for at least for me I can't speak for everyone but like as you're as you're in your ability to do this work um and it gives you the opportunity to explore like what parts about it that maybe you would want to specialize in or or um the demographics that like you are more uh inclined to work with um and then currently um Noah and I Noah and I are both in our field year so I'm just working more uh, just working more closely with schools um, and having more of a, like in your first year, it's more of a observing role. But now we're actually um, getting to have like interventions with kiddos in schools and like working really closely with our uh, school psychology supervisors. And um, it does look different because we are virtual. Um, so I will admit that, but um, it's still like just such an amazing experience. Um, and so that's what I've really loved. And I promise I'm not just saying this, but challenging wise, um, like grad school in general, kind of like Miranda was saying is very challenging. But for me, it's like not like this program is what makes it not as challenging. <laughs> um, like I often say this and I'm not just saying it. <laughs> um, but like I 
don't know if I like would survive grad school if I wasn't in like this program just because of how supportive it is. Um, and like with all the demands of that come with grad school, um, just being in such like a supportive, like collaborative and um, I don't, I don't even know. Yeah. <laughs> like we, like our faculty just like care so much about our well being, and um, we're all just like really want like the best for each other and all of that gushy goodness. Um, so that's the challenge for me. <laughs> so my favorite experience so far in the program has probably been the summer clinic. So after just one year of coursework, um, I had summer clinic and I had one intervention case. So a child came to the clinic with reading difficulties and I provided a reading intervention twice a week. And over just two months, she made a lot of progress with reading, which is super cool to see. And then also did an assessment case where a student came with reading difficulties. And it's super cool. You get to choose the assessments you're going to give. Gave like six assessments, score them, interpret them. And it's so cool how you can tell like very specifically, is it a learning disability, ADHD, something else? And after just one year being able to do that, to write the results, help a parent understand what's going on with their child and to write recommendations for how to support the kid in school next year, knowing that the teachers are going to read the report and already have a jump start on helping that child was awesome. And that's after just one year. So I can't believe how much I've grown already. And it's a really cool feeling. And then also like Brittany said, the amount of support in this program is amazing. Usually we have a little office called the bullpen where it's just like one table with a bunch of chairs around it and everybody hangs out there all the time and you vent together, rant together, learn together. Um, it's super supportive. And the faculty here is another amazing thing. I had the opportunity to work with the school district that I'm in right now to talk about school resource officers and negotiating their contracts. So earlier this week, I just called up Dr. Eklund who's an expert on SROs and we talked for an hour and just learned so much about SROs just through a little phone call. And so I think that goes to show just the importance of picking your advisor and choosing a program that meets your interests. Go somewhere that has faculty that has the same interests as you because it's really an amazing resource. And uh, that's a big deal in grad school. The most difficult thing for me has been just balancing everything you know, the more amazing the program, the more amazing the opportunities are, but it's so hard to turn them down. You know, you get invited to, to do tons of different research papers and projects and internships and doing coursework on top, it can be a lot. And so you have to get really good at turning down experiences and choosing what to put your energy into. So, you know, depending on how good you are at balancing that, um, yeah, you'll get better at it no matter where you go for grad school. It's a skill that we all have to develop. Um, Andy and others, I, you know, I'm sensitive to the time. So if you're okay, um, I just want to make sure we have a chance to answer some of the questions in the chat box. And I appreciate Miranda and Noah and Brittany, each of you doing an excellent job of telling us a little bit more about your experience so far. And I think addressing some of the questions that were specific to you and, and the student experience. Um, I, someone asked a question, um, is it Shania? I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing your name correctly, but, um, and thanks for having your camera on. Um, what, what is the culture on burnout in school psych, whether it be during grad program or working in the field? That's a good question. I actually don't know what the statistics are. I don't know, Andy, if you do, um, about because school psychology is so unique, we don't have the statistics like we do in uh, education as far as teachers are concerned, you know, like the percentage of teachers who leave the field. Sorry, I have a three-year-old here who decided to sneak into the room. Um, <laughs> who's trying to see who's on the call, but um, I would say our um, retention rate in our program is really high as far as the number of students who start the program and finish. Um, and 
I would say at least of those, <laughs> I'm just going to set her on my lap. This is Ellie. You guys can say hi. Um, of the, um, of people who are in the field, um, the people I know who've gone in the field are still in the field. I don't know very many people who have left, but um, I certainly could check into that and get back to you. Thank you. <laughs> hmm. Um, someone else asked a question about um, like choosing between different programs. Like how do you choose? I, we often get questions around like, what's the difference between school counseling, school social work and school psychology? And um, <clears throat> I will say, I think half of the job between the three professions is very similar as far as helping support students, helping support teachers, working with families. Um, I think some of the differences that exist um, have to do with the training and then um, the role once you actually get into the field. Um, I will speak and just say like, Mike, I love school social work. I didn't leave school social work because it's a bad field or because I didn't love it. Um, I worked as a pr uh, practitioner for seven years and then went back to get my PhD in school psychology and um, just found that I had worked primarily with middle school and high school youth and was really interested in prevention and early intervention and how do we support kids who have behavioral and social emotional concerns. And when I went to research this more, I found that most of the research was happening in the field of school psych. And that's why I went back to school. Um, and I wanted to teach and train school psychologists because um, I was had been a mental health coordinator um, for a large school district in Colorado and really loved mentoring um, new practitioners in the field, people who had been in the field for a while and just found that school psychology um, really had um, some of the core components and research that were answering some of those questions of practice that I had. So that was why I changed. Um, I will say that the, the aspects of school psychology I see are different is we really focus on um, not only the um, behavioral and academic um, functioning of students, but also like the biological bases of behavior, if that makes sense, understanding cognitive processes, understanding what health factors might be um, potentially impacting behavior, um, understanding like the chemistry behind mental illness um, and how that can play out. Um, and so I liked that aspect of the science behind behavior, um, I think was super strong in psychology, which just looked a little bit different um, than it did in social work and counseling. I think school counselors tend to do more around like college career and, and planning and scheduling. School sites don't really do that as much, um, but I found that school psychology really had more of a broad based role of helping kids across academics, across behavior, across mental health, and so um, those things really spoke to me as a professional. And Katie, I'd like to address the burnout question. Yeah. Um, so this career is so diverse and I encourage all of you, if you're interested in this, to shadow a school psychologist, but don't stop there, shadow several and shadow in different school districts because mm -hmm. I did this in undergrad and it's amazing how different the role looks even in our field practicum right now we have totally different experiences and so you may end up at a school where they define your role as like doing special education evaluations all the time and you want to do counseling but there might be a school psychologist in a neighboring district who does counseling almost every single day and never really does a cognitive assessment mm -hmm. and so I think burnout can occur when you're in a school that doesn't really fit with your interests. But the good thing about this field is that there's almost always a school or a clinic or a practice nearby that can meet your needs. It might just take a little bit longer to find that specific school. Hope that makes sense. And I, someone asked about um, our contact information. I put that in the chat box. If you wanna follow up with any other questions after this, um, I know we're approaching seven, so I wanna be sensitive to time. Um, I did put that in the chat box um, here as well. Um, I'll answer too, would you say school psych is more common in elementary schools or also in middle school and high school? I think um, most 
schools are required by law actually to have a school psychologist, which is a surprise to most people because of special education mandates um, to help support kids um, and determine if they qualify for special education. So school psychs are part of that assessment process and then the development of um, individualized educational plans. Um, and so I think you'll find that they're present in K through 12 settings, uh, depending upon the school district. Um, you might find some school districts where schools, like one school psychologist will work at two elementary schools um, and other school districts, you have a full-time school psychologist at an elementary. And maybe as Noah said, there were two school psychs at his um, larger high school. Um, so I think the ratios look a little bit different, but certainly um, they should be common across K through 12 settings. Um, Andy, Brittany, Miranda, Noah, any other questions on here that you want to respond to? Noah, how did you go about um, contacting a school psych to shadow? Someone asked. Um, I think midway through undergrad, I just found a school psychologist in the community who graduated from Madison and contacted her. Otherwise, Katie Eklund, Dr. Eklund helped me um, find a few people to shadow, but it, they're pretty common. Yeah, and I would say if you, if any of you are at home now, if you're not in Madison, looking up who the school psychologist in your community and reaching out to them to say like, hey, you know, I grew up here, I went to high school at so-and-so, or I went to the elementary school you're working at, like, would you, I'm really interested in this field, I wanna learn more. Um, most people are willing to set up a phone call, like set up a Skype right now. Um, you know, certainly I think having a time just to chat with you a little bit more about what they do. Um, mo I find most school psychologists are very friendly people and um, are willing to talk to prospective students, especially. And if you have any problems, I'm also happy to try to put you in touch with somebody in the local community. Another thing you could do is just ask to do like a half an hour interview with the school psychologist. That's something you could easily do over Zoom and just ask, what do you do in a typical day? Um, have you worked in another school before this and how is it different to your role that you're currently in? And that alone could be super helpful. My school psych has also had um, a undergrad uh, shadow her in the Zoom setting. Um, so she's been to like multiple of our meetings and then um, she also conducted a short interview with her. So that is a possibility. Mm -hmm. Um, great. Well, I know it's, um, seven o'clock and I want to be sensitive to everyone's time. Um, like I said, I'm happy. I think Andy and I are both happy to connect with um, students offline or via email if you want to reach out to us. And certainly, um, I'm sure Miranda, Noah, Brittany, yes, you'd be willing to receive emails. I'm like, put your email on there. Hopefully he said yes, great. And otherwise, it was really nice talking with you and telling you a little bit more about school psychology. Um, I will mention, if you're interested in applying to our program specifically, applications um, to apply for next fall, applications are actually due December 1st. And um, we ask students to submit their CV. Um, transcripts, their undergraduate transcripts. Um, we have you complete an essay that tells us a little bit more about yourself and your interest in the field. Um, three letters of recommendation that could be from faculty uh, who know you well, or who've worked with you, could be from former supervisors, um, and then your GRE scores, which are optional this year. So you can include them, but you don't have to. Um, I think that's it. An application fee is part of it as well. But I'm also happy to um, chat with you about, you know, if you're interested in working in another state or want to live in other places, um, we're happy to put you in touch with other programs in other places as well. Andy, anything else? I don't just, yeah, I really appreciate, you know, the chance to talk with you about it and would love to talk more. Don't hesitate to reach out to us. Okay. Thank you, everyone. I hope everyone has a wonderful evening. Thanks again. Thank you, Brittany.
I was wondering if I could ask a quick question. I'm sorry, I was a little nervous to do it in front of everybody. No, no worries. Um, actually, I actually had two quick questions. 